Uh, Gary Fliss Park uh, for Level 1 and the White Star Balloon Group. The valve for the bottom of the balloon is designed to do two, two main functions. One of which is to seal off uh, incoming air, essentially as a small vacuum forms, which we expect to happen as the balloon deflates a little overnight. As it loses uh, temperature, the helium should shrink. We want something that will prevent air infiltration mixing with the helium and reducing the lift. Since the load ring is on the bottom of the balloon, effectively it sucks the sides in a little bit from the weight that's pulling down on the, on the balloon trying to hold itself up, and it causes a slight vacuum inside the balloon. We also have to have a safety valve that pops uh, to prevent an increase in pressure uh, beyond the ability of the balloon seems to be able to stand it. So uh, the valve has to function in both directions for different reasons. Um, this test rig is designed to illustrate uh, and measure the, uh, uh, the opening uh, characteristics uh, in both directions, opening and closing, to see if it will hold a vacuum for a long enough period of time uh, to produce a low enough flow rate that uh, we can tolerate it. In any event, the test rig includes um, a 12 volt and 5 volt power supply. Uh, Five volts going to a, a small vacuum pump. Uh, it's a combination vacuum and pressure pump. The other is a 12 volt solenoid valve and one switch which controls both at the same time. So it turns on the pump and the solenoid valve. When it shuts off, it shuts off so that it'll hold whatever vacuum or pressure has been out on the other side. Uh, the tap on this test volume to illustrate the valve. This is our valve. There's a suction cup on the bottom, which is supple enough to be able to conform uh, to slight irregularities that might develop. Uh, there's a seven inch hole. This uh, is right now upside down in the normal position for the balloon. Ordinarily, it would face this way on the balloon. This would represent the load ring that uh, bears the weight of the payload. The payload has to, the, the load ring has to support a 12 pound payload, uh, six pounds of payload plus six pounds of ballast. The uh, uh, valve ring is a metal pan, basically, that has been uh, screwed and glued with silicone rubber to the uh, load ring. And there is a spring which activates this plate behind the uh, suction cup. In this position, this pushes down. Because in this position the weight of this is working with gravity in the other direction, gravity is pushing it down a little farther, you should expect different characteristics when tested upside down or right side up. We can demonstrate that to some extent. It's a, it's a small difference, but it does show up. This is a water manometer, a U-tube manometer. There's basically water and food coloring in here. The difference in pressure, I can illustrate by sucking on it a little bit, looks like this, that there's a difference in the height of the two columns, and the difference between the heights of the columns in inches represents inches of water uh, pressure. It's, a, it's, a, it's directly convertible to, atmosphere, to atmospheres or PSI or whatever you need, or pascals, whatever you need. Now, it's set up right now for vacuum. If I turn this on, we'll begin to build up a vacuum in the chamber. The, vo the flow rate is fairly low. The vacuum is fairly low, but as you can see, as left on, it develops a vacuum. We're, we're not going to worry about it going much farther than about six inches of water vacuum. Uh, in uh, some measurements we've already done on previous test balloons, we don't expect the, the actual vacuum to build up much more than about 40 pascals, roughly an eighth of an inch of, of water. The, uh, it's, but this just shows that it can hold a significant vacuum. Now, there will be a slight leak, which will translate to a flow rate, and you can measure that by the amount of time it takes to drop. Now, right now, we're showing six inches of difference. If I turn it off, that six inches begins to drop. In previous timings, it has taken approximately 50 seconds to drain down to zero. It's nonlinear because with an increase in 
vacuum, you have an increase in the amount of air, the, the tendency of the air to inrush, and so the flow rate is higher. And the flow rate begins to drop off as the vacuum drops. So if you wait long enough, it will eventually get down to zero. Gary, let's take a look at the graphs you came up with that show us some more information about what this all means to our actual balloon integrity overnight when the helium contracts as a result of cooling from loss of sunset or sun, excuse me, sunshine. The graph basically is uh, some room temperature testing similar to what was just demonstrated. Uh, essentially, the less vacuum shown here, six inches, zero inches, the less vacuum you have the slower the bleed rate, but it does turn out that it, it seems to be approaching a number that is non-zero. Uh, so far, our, a little quick guess, we seem to be looking somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 cc's a minute. Down in this range, it's low enough. Uh, some quick calculations show that it's somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 27 cc's a minute. And that's, uh, that's what we expect to actually see in flight, something like that, way right. at the bottom of this chart here. Right. So because of that, if you divide the volume of the balloon, roughly 900 cubic feet for the balloon, uh, which amounts to 25 million something uh, cc's, I took that times uh, 1%, uh, 100, that's 254,852 uh, cc's. 254,000 cc's divided by the, the number of cc's per minute gives you how many minutes it would take to infiltrate 1% of the balloon with air. 1% uh, of the balloon would amount to somewhere on the order of about a half a pound of uh, payload weight. If you take the number of uh, cc's for 1% divided by the flow rate, we end up with these kind of numbers shown here. Uh, lower flow rates, we're looking more like 111 or even higher numbers of hours, and we only expect the whole flight to last 72 hours. And this would not be a continuous process. We would expect uh, the infiltration from vacuum to only occur at night. At this leak rate, apparently, we could tolerate it for at least as long as we expect the flight to last. I've turned the pump around so that it's now blowing air in past the solenoid valve, and, and so it should build a pressure. Now the valve should open so that it won't build up pressure beyond a particular point, which is tolerable. And as you see here, the manometer will go up, but it will stop going up, and there is a slight rise in the suction cup that can be seen, but the amount of air is so, the, the amount of airflow is so low that you can't really see or hear the air flowing out of it, but you can see that it's effectively stopping the pressure rise beyond about three quarters of an inch of water or so, which is, from our calculations, well below the limit which would burst a seam on the balloon.